best is yet to come and babe won't it be fine you think you've seen the sun but you ain't seen it shine Hello everyone and welcome once again to Ask the Trek Spirits. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Sarah. Sarah, uh, over the last few months we've been occasionally getting questions from people about what our favorite episodes are. Indeed. And so we thought we would do yet another list video and uh, talk a little bit about some of our favorite episodes. Uh, last time we talked about uh, how to get on board Star Trek if, you, if you're not a Trek, you haven't really watched very much. And so uh, we thought we'd do a bit of a follow-up to that and talk about some of the episodes that we like the most. Now, uh, a lot of people seem to have um, def a lot of the same definitive best episodes in mind for each series of Star Trek. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, TNG usually, uh, Best of Both Worlds pops up, Bitter Light pops up, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. And um, original series, usually it's uh, Trouble Tribbles or it's uh, Sitting the Edge of Forever. Mm -hmm. um, well, we've, we've uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of these list videos and um, we've been talking about some of the same episodes here and there. And so what we thought we'd do uh, to be a little bit different today is um, instead of talking about our def what we think is the definitive best episode of each Star Trek series, instead we decided to change shows are favorite but based on which ones we each find most rewatchable. Yes. So, uh, so basically, this is not our uh, best episode list, but the episodes that each of us are most likely are most likely to pop into the machine and watch. Exactly, because if I were to pick my favorite episode from each series, it would change next week. I mean, because each series I probably have, with a couple exceptions of certain series, I have about four or five episodes that. You know, just rotate. I just love this episode, and the next week I love this episode. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, you know, it's hard to tell. Yeah, it changes so often. So uh, we, we we thought we'd be a little uh, a little more objective and just uh, think in our minds which which episodes jump in our heads the most when we say I'm just going to sit down and watch an episode. Yeah. And so uh, so so this is another uh, top five for each of us, um, but not number. Just for each series, which one do we find most rewatchable? So we're going to start with original series and work our way up. And uh, Sarah, original series, what is the episode that you are most likely to pop in the machine and watch. Interestingly enough, Menagerie. Really? Yes. That's interesting. Yeah, I went through a lot of them, and there are a lot of original series episodes that I really like, mm -hmm. and and I always have a hard time picking an original an original series episode to put in the player because there are so many good ones. Um, but I find that Menagerie gets put into the player a lot more often. The thing about original series, too, is that it's so episodic. Yeah. You know, everything is so um, disjointed from everything else that, I mean, you can really just put one of any of the 79 in and just watch mm -hmm. it and not really think about much else. And so, uh, yeah, it, for, the, for the really good ones, yeah, it's tough. I had a hard time with TOS also. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have thought of Menagerie, though. Yeah, like, I, just, I just love that episode, and to me, it just doesn't have any problems that would prevent me from... There are a lot of episodes that are really good, but then there's that one scene where you're like, you know, I don't want to watch that particular you know, exchange or scene or, you know, whatever. But if, to me, Menagerie just has no problems, and I just enjoy watching it. Um, it feels kind of like a film. Yeah. In a lot of ways, yeah, it's kind of movie like, and of course, I say longer. that after, and we and we reviewed Menagerie and talked about this, but I, I, I say this after we went to the theater and saw it. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the one that we've seen in the movie theater sure. because was uh, there was a remastered version, and we and uh, they, you know, they they showed it in the movie theater, but. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, that's 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 interesting. Um, I chose Mirror Mirror, which might be kind of obvious, but I couldn't help it. Um, for me, that's really uh, um, the most fun TOS episode mm -hmm. to watch. That is a good one. Uh, it's just it, all the performances in it are so much fun, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's it's. Uh, I felt like they were having a better time making that than they were, you know, you know, some of the others. And it's got a lot of energy uh, in it, and um, all the, all the characters who don't usually get to do much get to do stuff in that episode. Yeah, and that, yeah. That's, that's part oh, of it. Oh, and it has Mirror Spock with a beard. And you gotta love that. You know, everybody, everybody uh, with with, uh, with Sulu always talks about naked time uh, with the swordplay and stuff. Mm -hmm. And for me, the best Sulu episode is Mirror Mirror. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, he's Mirror Sulu, but really, like... Well, sure. Yeah. Yeah. TNG. TNG. Okay. You could probably call this one for me. Is it gonna be Darmok? No. No? Because see, you take Darmok for everything. I do, but, but episode that I always want to put in the player anytime you ask me. What TNG? Frame of Mind. Oh, Frame of Mind. Okay, because the other mind. one I almost went for uh, was Drumhead. Because I, I thought about Drumhead, and you know, I almost, I didn't yeah. pick it. I almost picked Drumhead just because one of the, okay, 
I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I'll let you talk. I'm sorry. I, we, but with TNG, there are two huge things that I look that I look for, and one of them is Picard speeches. Picard speeches. And I love, yes. and, and the other one is just crazy, crazy stuff. Right. But I, but I, I love Picard speeches, and that has one of the best Picard speeches. Oh sure, yeah. And um, but, I, but I'm the same way. But you love Riker. So I love Riker, especially when he's given something to do. And I love the crazy TNG episodes where just you have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. And even after I've seen this and I know what's going on, I just love the twists and turns it takes. And I love all the performances in it. And Riker's just amazing. Incredible. It's quite good. It's yeah. not one of my favorite episodes by any means. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I have some issues with it. We won't get into it. But uh, but they don't have anything to do with Jonathan Frakes' performance. Like he's, yeah. really, he's really great in it. Yeah. But I, I, I did think about Drumhead, and that probably would have been, you know, second, third, fourth on my list of, of once I put them in watch. Um, I chose Phantasms. Sure. And again, I don't think that that's the definitive best TNG episode. It's nuts. No, but that's uh, another weird episode. Yeah, I might... My, my favorite, or at least the ones I like to rewatch the most, seem to be the really weird ones with uh -huh. TNG. Uh, that show was so good at those. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, uh, I, I have issues with Brandon Braga as a writer, but when he gets those, they're so much fun. Yeah. And it seems like a lot of my favorite Voyager episodes, this isn't where I went with yeah. Voyager, but I think a lot of my favorite Voyager episodes do the same thing yeah. and are written by Braga. Um, Phantasms is, is, the, is the one where Dave's dreaming, and you get the Deanna Troy cellular peptide cake with mint frosting, mm -hmm. and uh, you get the phone in his chest, and yeah. you get Sigmund, and straw. Sigmund Freud, and yeah, yeah, and it's crazy, yeah. and it's so, it's so interesting, it's, it's, it's really refreshing. Uh, how, how how just extremely different it is. Yeah, so. that's a good. I should watch that again. It's been a, it's been probably you know, six months. That is months. that is the one that if I'm just going to sit down and watch an episode, it's it's very likely to be that's going to be one of three or four. So. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. DS Nine. DS Nine. Okay. The Wire. Really? Yes. Okay. And I know I knew you loved that one. I, but I didn't love this. No, if that was going to go there. It yeah. probably is my favorite episode of DS Nine, wow. which I know it's incredible. There are episodes that technically are superior, mm -hmm. better written, better acted, better, you know, whatever. And just bigger episodes. Bigger episodes. Yeah. More, a lot of people series. wouldn't think of The Wire. But The Wire, that's the one where Garrick has this thing in his head, and it's going to kill him, um, and they have to figure out how to take it out. And it's I gotta so ask good. you something, because I know that Garrick is like your favorite character in that series, and um, I'm a little surprised that you would put The Wire over um, Impoch Norm. That would be second. Because I know how much you love Empoch yeah, Noor. Yeah, but the difference is that in Empoch Noor, Garrick isn't himself. Yeah, it's he, a little small it's there, but Garrick not crazy. too much. Yeah, And crazy Garrick is cool. Yeah. You know, homicidal maniac. Crazy but he's not Garrick. really responsible for his actions. No, and so... I mean, he's kind of on this big drug thing. That's Although, hair, you could make the argument that the wire kind of has that too. Sort of, but he is more in control of his... Uh, facility. And he made a choice. Or faculty. That got, yeah. He, 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 he uh, <laughs> yeah. you get tired there? <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he got, he got a, uh, um, in, in, in The Wire, he made a decision that got him to where that thing mm -hmm. in his head was doing what it was doing, yeah. right? He, because, because I mean, um, that was kind of... What's funny is you, you said druggy for, uh, for, for Impact Noir, but The Wire is really druggy. Well, it's, in a way. He, he got but addicted he's still, to it. He's, well, he, right? he got addicted to... Um, the effect that that, that implant Because wasn't it like it keeps giving him like pleasant endorphins? Exactly. And then he just but keeps it on all the he time? He kept it on then... all the time, and now it's like degrading in his brain. Right. But the thing is, he's not... Um, it doesn't impair him. And so he knows what he's saying when he's telling Dr. Bashir all these crazy stories. Yeah. And, Good call. You know, he's lying to him, and it's lie upon lie, and there's always a he an element of truth there. Mm -hmm. But you never know exactly what he's what what's real and what's not yeah and whereas just, impact impact more he just he just kind of lose it, it's kind of like it's yeah, again i kind of i kind of said smallville it's sort of like him on rip k right yeah like, well he's just he wants to kill people he loses his, in, in his yeah. inhibitions and and um and we play some more with the with the fun cardassian tropes mm -hmm. of of at the core are cardassians just ruthless bloodthirsty killers and yeah. we never can be totally sure whether or not that's true with them and i and i love that yeah yeah but I love all Garrick stuff in DS9, so, you know. 
For me, the S9 came down between two episodes. Okay. Uh, one of them, and I, and I always put these these two kind of run on top of each other because I think that they are that these are both the most watchable episodes of DS9. What are you, what are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you had a look on your face like, I know what he's going to say. Um, these two episodes, I think, um, are, are kind of on top of each other for, for me in that they they, uh, they both are watchable outside of anything else. Uh, they're really, really standalone, and they're also really emotional and, and kind of gut-wrenching. Uh, one of them is, and I didn't go that way with everything else, but mm -hmm. DS9 is such a story-driven character show. Sure, I have two in mind for you. I'll see if I'm right. Okay, one of them is Far Beyond the Stars, okay. which is not the one I chose. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I came close. But the other one is The Visitor. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the, okay. yeah the, what did you think I was going to say? No, well, I, you, you thought I was going to say uh, In the Pale Moonlight. Yes, of course. I mean, that one's excellent. That's the one I thought you were going to say. Oh. Um, in, in the Pale Moonlight... It is good. In the Pale Moonlight, in my opinion, is one of, if not the best Cisco episode. You know, it's also a really good Garrick yeah. episode, so you very easily could have said it. Yeah. Uh, it's one of Garrick's best episodes, well, too. Yeah, He's just more in the background than he is in The Wire. Yeah. Um, boy, we're talking <laughs> a lot about DS9 right now. Um, but anyway, um, I've been really on a DS9 kick lately. Uh, the Visitor uh, spoke to me in a way that no other Star Trek episode ever did, because it's about writing, uh, and it's just super emotional. Like, I get goosebumps every time I think mm -hmm. about it. Uh, that's the one I throw in. Like, I, I watched it. You're, you're going to laugh at me. Um, I, 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 was, I was in the middle of DS9. I got all the way through Season 6, and I went back and, and watched um, uh, The Visitor again, uh -huh. uh, because I just... I, I, I love it. I don't, I don't even like to talk too much about it in case people haven't seen it, because it was kind of a sleeper for me. Like, I didn't know about it for a long time. Um, for, a, for a while, I just never heard about it. Like, people didn't talk about it, and I didn't watch DS9 all the way through uh, um, up until a few years back. And um, when, it, when, it, when it snuck up on me, first of all, um, Tony Todd is one of my favorite actors. Sure. And I talk about that a lot, but I love Tony Todd. And he plays, you know, the, the uh, elderly Jake Sisko um, when he, you know, grows up and becomes a prolific writer, and it's kind of a time travel thing, but it's... I don't know. Uh, it's such a good character piece, and uh, I don't. Know, it just it, it, it spoke to me. It's 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 DS 9s inner light in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense. It makes a lot of sense. But um, actually. you know, but, yeah. he lives a life and then he starts over. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, it's it's a bigger deal to me than inner light ever was. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because he lives his own life rather than living, you know, on a life on on some random alien. Yeah, planet. he lives a whole alternate life. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, uh, Picard. It, it was his life, but it was really kind of in the place of this other And it's guy, sad so. in a different way than Inner Light is sad. Because yeah. Inner Light, Picard grows up and he lives a totally fulfilling life, mm -hmm. and he has to see this planet that he um, has, has, has uh, come to call home die. Yeah. And in The Visitor, it's kind of the opposite of that, uh, where, where Jake Sisko grows up. Yeah. He actually has a fulfilling life, and except, then, except that, that has, it's, it's not filled with because, remorse because yeah. of what happened. Well, well, what what happens? It's not as fulfilling as it should have been because he loses everything because he, he keeps trying to, keeps get, trying his to get his dad back. back. Yeah, yeah. Right. and it's so sad. Yeah. Um, you know, he he's, he's he stops writing. He loses his wife. It's, just, yeah. it's really really sad. Yeah. And um, it touches me kind of like something like Field of Dreams does because it's very it's a very father and son thing, mm -hmm. and you know, fathers and sons getting broken up, and like I don't know it. It, it's it's a it's a big deal. For me. I I do like the scene where Cisco comes and he's like you know Ghost Cisco or whatever, and um, he talks with his son and they just have that moment together. And Cisco's like, well, I kind of wish you actually lived your life and forgotten about me. You didn't yeah. need to keep coming it back mm -hmm. and trying to make this right. Yeah, you didn't have to do this. Yeah. Um, yeah, Trek has a whole lot of episodes that are trying to be that emotional, mm -hmm. and that one is one of the most sincere of them. Yeah, that one actually succeeds. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, let's go ahead and go to Voyager. Okay, Voyager. Um, the Thaw. The Thaw. Out of all of Voyager. Out of all of Voyager, I know. It was the very that first me. episode of Voyager I ever <laughs> I saw. I like The Thaw. Uh, I love it's Michael McKean. It's so but much fun. It ain't I the love best Michael episode McKean. of the show. Well, I know well, we're not no, doing we're best episode. No, we're not doing best episode, but, right. but every time I want to watch Voyager, I just, I just want to watch The Thaw. I can't get past it. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, it, it, is, it is a really great Janeway episode. It is. Janeway has some great lines, and she's really creepy at the end when she's taking on fear. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, Michael McKean's great the whole way through. And, you know, as far as... Um as far as Voyager is concerned, it, that's one of those few that really harkens back to TOS. It's kind of—it's not really a morality play, but it's talking about a, a big idea, mm -hmm. a concept. It's—it's—you it's, it's, know—it's Janeway versus well, and Kim well, versus you these, fear. You know, you got these just, people down on a planet. What really is fear? And, and technology has taken over and messing with their brains, and so the Starfleet captain has to come down and make things right. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
you know, that could be that could be a TOS episode. Yeah. Well, and the whole and near the the whole thing takes place on one one set. Yeah. And yeah. it's really colorful, and there's mm -hmm. all this weird music, and it just yeah. feels really TOS. And I really like um, during the whole thing that um, the clown is making fun of various Starfleet elements. You know, I mean, just you oh, know, yeah, he has yeah. this giant communicator band. Yeah, and... it manages to be very Star Trek. Yeah. Even though it, I mean, it very easily could have not been very Star mm -hmm. Trek because not much of it takes place on the ship or yeah. with Starfleet technology and things mm -hmm. like that. And then and then you know, Michael McKean keeps reminding us, yeah, I know yeah. this is Star Trek. I'm yeah. tapped into this guy's mind. You yeah, know? and he, I mean, he goes around yelling "Red Alert, Red Alert." He's kind of just I making mean, fun just, of Star it's Trek. Just it's hilarious. It's very yeah, it's very hilarious. Yeah, I'm so, with you. What was yours? I like it. Okay, this is the one where I'm going to kind of break the rules just a little bit. In uh -huh. that I cho I did choose what I think is the best episode of the series, but it also happens to be the one that I always put in a lot. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't help this uh, Scorpion. Okay, I just couldn't help yeah. it. There were a couple others I thought about, but really, like when we're talking about just which one am I going to put in, it's going to mm -hmm. be Scorpion, and the reason is because. Uh, that's the one where I feel like, um, well, first of all, I feel like that's the first time Chakotay really gets to be a character. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, Jamway is, uh, so much more three-dimensional in that, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, I, she, I, I love her relationship with she, with, with Chakotay, and, um, I'm not just saying this because, we, we do actually happen to watch SF Debris, and I'm not just saying this just because he, he just reviewed this, but, um, but he made a point that I've said before, um, uh, in, in my in my in my Star Trek club, uh, which is that Scorpion is what that show should have been. Mm -hmm. um, we finally get uh, these two's different philosophies that came from their different backgrounds. Um, you know, you know, going head to head like they like they should have the yeah, whole time. Starfleet versus Maquis. You really did get that Starfleet versus Maquis. There will Maquis. be more friction than is generally seen throughout. And series. it's subtle enough. The beautiful thing is they don't really talk about. Maquis versus Starfleet in that they episode. Just have those you just different see philosophies. it. Yeah. yeah, and then it kind of goes back to status quo after that. Yeah. It's really kind of sad. So and it introduces your probably your favorite Voyager character. Yeah, because I love because I love Seven of Nine. You know. um, I love the Borg, and I, I think they do the Borg more or less right in that. Although yeah. I mean, they, they change some things, but I, li I like what's done with it. Um, I like Eight Four Seven Two. Mm -hmm. It's a very you know. It's a it's a really thick episode where there's a lot of action, but it's not just action. And I don't know, like so so yeah, I think it's the best episode of the series. But I but I also just like I want to I want to watch it again. Sure, you know. Yeah, and every time I think about it, I'm like, oh, I want to watch that yeah, again. So yeah, certainly. So anyway, uh, I'm not sure what else I could have picked over over that. So yeah, anyway. fair enough. Uh, what was your Enterprise? Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, I. Scoured the list. I saw her online. sit at the computer, scour this list. And I went up and down and up and down. She couldn't write anything down. And I was just frustrated because what Enterprise episode do I actually want to watch more than once? And I know that's harsh, but okay. So I came up with half of an episode. <laughs> oh no! All right, those of you Enterprise fans, I'm really sorry about this. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm just not a big fan of Enterprise. There it is. All right. I like Harbinger. See, I thought you were going to say season three. I thought you were just going to go, season three, that's my favorite episode. Uh, no, I like Harbinger. All right. But I don't like the T'Pol trip. Which actually is, by the way, season, a season stuff. three episode. But yeah, yeah take out T'Pol, take out Trip. Just, you know, bring out Reed and the Makos, you know, beating each other up. I mean, that's what the episode's about. Yeah, because he and um, the the leader of the Makos, they, I mean, they have a lot of chemistry. Well, they do. Um, it's great. Yeah. It's actually, you know... I mean, it's fun to watch, and I don't know, you know. What what was his name? Uh, Major Hayes. Yeah, Major Hayes. Yeah, that's right. But it tells you how long it's been since I've watched another place. Um, it also has a lot of good mythos stuff going uh -huh. on uh, because that's that's the uh, that's the introduction to what the sphere, sphere builders look like. I'm pretty sure that's the one where where the where the one shows shows up and walks through walls and stuff. Um, I think that's the I, same episode. I think so. Because I remember when we first watched it, Sarah and I, by the way, I'm sorry, a little, a little walk down memory lane. Uh, Sarah and I were uh, were dating when that when that uh, show came out, and um, Sarah actually started watching Enterprise for the first time in the middle of season three with Chosen Realms. There's yeah. only a few episodes after that, and uh, we, we started watching this together because I realized Sarah was like, I want to try to watch some Star Trek while it's on before you know it gets canceled, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna watch Star Trek when it's on, and. Um, we watched Har Harbinger together, and um, I remember. Assuming this is, I think it's the same episode. Mm -hmm. And um, I seem to remember uh, when, when the when we first saw those field builders, we started calling them the phasing in and out guy. Yeah. And we kept calling him that until he yeah. finally had a name. And I don't know. In my mind, they will always be the phasing in and out guys. Oh, yeah. That Okay, so uh, we totally just ran out of footage, and that's how you know your video is too long. Uh, okay, so uh, let's let's talk uh, real quick about the one I picked uh, for Enterprise. Yes, I picked is. First Flight. Okay. 
And uh, First Flight is, uh, is, in my opinion, the one place where Archer seems like a thinking, feeling human being. Uh, Archer, and again, this is my opinion, I know a lot of people feel this way, but um, Archer, a lot of times doesn't make sense, he's kind of contradictory, he does, you know, different, um, th he'll do one thing in one episode, and then he'll do, he'll take the opposite stance in another one, mm -hmm. and he's just right because he's Captain Archer. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, but, but you don't have that with First Flight, and uh, he, he, again, he just seems more well-rounded, and the universe feels more fleshed out, and, and we have a better sense of what, you know, pre-Federation life is like on, mm -hmm. on Earth. Yeah, I really always thought that that episode should have gone somewhere early first season. Yeah. Because you really get a good glimpse of what who Archer is as a character, and you don't really get that very much early on in Enterprise, I don't think. He's just flying around looking at planets. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> well, the thing is, yeah, and he just, like, he seems like, he's such an angry person, you know? <laughs> I mean, like uh, you just you get so bad out of shape about the about the about the dumbest things, and yeah. a lot of times it just seems like anyone could have been him, right? Anybody could have been the captain of, of the Enterprise, and um, but in 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 first flight, you really you really get a better understanding as to why he's worthy to eventually be a captain, yeah. right? And I, you I don't get know. a better sense of that there than you do in the pilot, I think. Yeah, exactly, because really in Enterprise, I always thought it was weird. They, you get this. You get this idea in Enterprise that we don't need protocols because we don't know what we're doing, and so they yeah. just don't have protocols for anything. At all. Like, and it's like, know, okay, well, we have we've no never been in space, so so therefore we don't need rules. We don't have any rules. Like you know, we've never had an army or a navy or anything, air force on Earth ever. It's just, you know? it's, it's it's really silly, and uh, so I feel weird picking First Flight because it's kind of a flashback episode, mm -hmm. uh, but. What it's doing is just so much better than a lot of the rest of the series. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, I really love that episode, and mm -hmm. there are other more exciting things I could have picked, uh, you know. Yeah, but uh, right. there's some season three stuff I really like. But yeah, but, it's uh, hard to watch that out of order, though. Yeah, exactly. Uh, first flight's at least decently standalone, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, I don't love the present stuff. Like, I feel like like uh, when when uh, when Archer and Paul are kind of reminiscing about this, that it's really kind of forced. But uh -huh. the actual flashback stuff's really good, and Trip's really good in that. So. Yeah, and I really like how they set up the relationship between Archer and Trip, and that's another reason they should have had that earlier in the se in the series. Yeah. So. Well, uh, we're all out of time, and we've been all out of time. <laughs> time for and, uh, a while. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, sorry this was so long, but we kind of got, I guess they've been kind of long lately, but uh, you know, we only do this every two weeks, and we just really like talking about Star Trek. Uh, we yeah. we, um, uh, we kind of got into DS9 a little bit, so. Yeah, well, it's DS9, and we've been on a kick lately. Thanks a lot for watching. Feel free to tell us what your favorite, most rewatchable episode is. Not your favorite, but your most, you know, the one you put in the most often if you're a big Trekkie, and uh, feel free to leave that in the comments. If there's something you'd like us to talk about in the future, if there's a question you want to ask us on Ask the Trek the first, uh, leave us a comment about that as well. And thanks as always for watching. The I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Sarah.